John Weideman, Troy Murray, one of the best booths in the NHL. Thanks for joining us here. We're talking a little uh, 2010 Game 6 Stanley Cup Final in Philadelphia. Uh, I want to start with you, John, from a play-by-play -play perspective. Uh, pretty crazy finish of that game, obviously. Um, imagine a play-by-play -play guy dreams of a moment like that, to be able to call an overtime Stanley Cup clinching goal. Uh, maybe didn't quite go how you expected. It was some craziness there, but I'd love to start with your perspective on, on what that call was like. Well, thank you. To start with, you know, I remember that day waking up and thinking, you know, this could be the day where the Blackhawks could win their first Stanley Cup in 49 years. And I thought about, you know, if that moment arrives, uh, you know, as a play-by-play -play guy, I've got an obligation to make sure that I do that moment justice. So uh, earlier in the day, I was thinking about, you know, what I might say if the moment came by. And I know that we had, a, we had a, an extra game to play. We had a game seven that we could have had they not won that night. But I was thinking about that night and <clears throat> I just I just kept thinking about, you know, what it meant to the fans, the number of years that had passed. And, uh, you know, the, I wanted to try it and make the most out of that moment because you're only going to get one chance to do it. And uh, for me, it was really, it was, a, it was a day where you knew what you had to do. You kind of knew what you could expect to happen. But when the game starts, you don't know where it's going to go. Uh, fortunately, it did end up our way, and uh, you know we were out on a ledge. We weren't in a broadcast booth. We were out on a ledge in Philadelphia. They put us 15 feet down from the last radio booth, so that was a bit of a challenge in and of itself, but you just sort of block all of that out, and when the moment did come where Patrick Kane scored that goal, uh, I have to admit that there was a lot of confusion, and it wasn't just with us. It was with all of the broadcast teams. Uh, but uh, fortunately, Troy was right there next to me. And I think that he and I, and you can get his commentary on this, you know, after I'm done here, but I think he and I had the best perspective of any of the broadcast teams of that goal because it happened almost literally right below us. Um, since we'd been bumped out of the booth, the radio booth, we were 15 feet down toward the goal that we were attacking in overtime. And, uh, I saw Patrick Kane shoot the puck from almost an impossible angle, and I didn't see it come out the other side. I, and I, I saw the players all reacting and kind of turning to go back up ice, but I never saw the puck anywhere. And then I heard Troy say, it's in. It's in the net. And in, in the next moment, I looked down, I saw Michael Layton, the goaltender for the Flyers, and he had turned one way and then the other. And when he, he turned a certain way, I could see the puck underneath the apron of the, the inside of the net, the back of the puck, and that's all I could see. But when I heard Troy saying, it's in, it's in the net, then that's when I knew that it actually had beaten Leighton, and it was the game-winning goal, the series-clinching goal. And uh, that's when it, when I went into, you know, my spiel about, you know, what I felt that the goal was all about and the series was all about and the Stanley Cup win was all about. So it uh, was it's something that I'll never be able to live again in my life. I don't ever want to relive that again it was a special moment for me probably the pinnacle of my broadcasting career when I look at it but it was a great great moment for the Blackhawks and their fans I, I think there's a there's a I think there's a couple of things that you kind of have to take into consideration here and first of all uh, what John was saying our perspective because the visiting radio kind of ends up on the lowest end of the, the lowest point of the totem pole with the other tv channels national broadcasts on both sides uh, of the border um, so where we were, we were pushed way down. And basically, as John said, we the play that developed uh, with Patrick Kane happened right below us. And uh, when Kane shot the puck, I I pretty much thought it was you know I I thought it was in. I I, I you know I kind of had that real good angle right there. And as you know, I'm not going to interrupt kind of what was going on there. But all of a sudden, you know, you could just feel and sense the confusion on the ice and that's when I just started yelling it's in it's in um and all of a sudden and if you listen to the broadcast and you know John knows this and I think Doc Emmerich is the best in the business um you know he was trying to find out where the puck went there was a lot of confusion on the broadcaster side of it because it didn't hit the net and come out you couldn't see it whatever it was the players on the ice um were really confused on what was going on Michael Layton knew it was in he did look over his right shoulder and then turned around as he was down on his right pad. He kind of just turned over. He knew that, you know, you can feel the puck as a goaltender. He didn't feel it. 
and he knew it was in the net. So Leighton knew it was in the net. Um, and then the delayed reaction of the players was, was incredible. The coaching staff wouldn't celebrate until they got word from the locker room that the puck actually was in the net. If you look at the referee, and I'm not sure who it was, behind the goaltender, he actually almost collided with Patrick Kane. And he jumped out of the way, and he had no idea that the puck was in the net. So the confusion after was really something that I think if you're a lifelong broadcaster like John was, um, or is, and, and you have that opportunity to, to make that call. It was just, it was one of those things that you just couldn't write a script for, for how it, it kind of turned out. And for everybody involved to, to be in that position to call for first and foremost, a Blackhawks game winning Stanley Cup overtime goal um, is the goal of any play by play broadcaster. It doesn't get any better than that, as John was saying. So our unique perspective really was, was a, in some ways, it was a blessing in disguise of because where we were, we could see that whole play develop right down in front of us. You guys have both been around hockey for a very long time. Have you ever seen anything like that? Obviously with the magnitude of the situation, but just so much uniqueness in that moment. Um, I, I can't imagine that's something you guys have seen a whole lot in your careers. Yeah, Eric, I'll speak as a broadcaster because I never played a second in the National Hockey League. Troy did. I know and he's seen a lot in, in his time that he was a player. But just as a broadcaster, I had never seen anything like that. And I was hoping that there would be some cl conclusiveness to the goal call. You know what I mean? Like maybe a guy skating down, maybe Patrick Kane skating down the ice on a breakaway and shooting the puck in. Or uh, maybe a point shot that got tipped into the net in some way. Uh, or, or maybe a, a shot through a screen, something like that. But uh, for Patrick Kane to shoot from the angle that he did, and then the chaos that Troy was talking about to and Stu, you, you, really, you really have to dig down and do your best with that moment because it is so chaotic. And, you know, you're, you're human after. I mean, you're, you're going to do your best with the moment. I think anybody would. But uh, I personally have never seen anything like that. I know that uh, working through my career up until that time, had the opportunity to call some playoff overtime goals. And, and there was always that sense of finality as I'm, as I'm speaking of, but uh, with, in this case, there wasn't, but I think really, if you asked any Blackhawk fan anywhere around the world, they'd say, I'm just fine with the way Patrick Kane scored that goal. So I'm <laughs> well, I'll throw it onto the, the flip side as a player. And, and when I was uh, my last year in the NHL, I was with the Colorado Avalanche in, in 96. I wasn't playing in the game uh, per se, uh, but we went into a triple overtime situation where we had an opportunity to win um, the Stanley Cup against the Florida Panthers at, in game four. It, could have, it, it, uh, it was a sweep. Um, but when Uwe Krupp shot from the point, there was a definitive end. You knew that you saw the puck go in. I mean, it, the game was over. Yeah. There was no confusion. The celebration was, was instant. Um, and I think that's what makes this whole scenario that happened in 2010 so unique because, as John was saying, the, there was no definitive finish to the game by seeing the puck go in, by knowing that Patrick Kane made a deke and, and scored the goal. You see it go in, you see it cross the line, the puck's in the net, you can see it. But that just wasn't there in this whole situation. So as a broadcaster, I had never been a part of that before, obviously, never been to uh, as a broadcaster to a cup final before as a player, uh, winning it in 96 with Colorado, but there was a definitive finish to that game we knew it was in the celebration began so just the confusion of how the game ended in Philadelphia probably makes it one of the unique finishes in the history of the NHL. Troy you can when you're yelling it's in it's in in the call we've used that in so many videos obviously on blackhawks.com and blackhawks tv so I've heard it so many times it's almost kind of ingrained it in my head when you're yelling you can hear the excitement in your voice as a broadcaster. Well, I didn't know I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> how, uh, this is all new to me. As a former Blackhawk, like to be there for that, um, I mean, I know you're, you're, you feel that as a former player to see your, your team, the team you played on uh, winning it. What did it mean from that perspective to you? Well, and I, I think this kind of comes through as me as a broadcaster, and I think it does for a lot of ex-players who are in my position as, as the color guy. Um, we still have a lot of passion that burns up inside us as a player. And I watch the game as a broadcaster, but I also watch it as a former player and as a fan. Um, so to be involved in that was, was something 
that I was trying to figure out, trying to stay professional, but in the same side, at the same time, I was, you know, I've been a Blackhawk my whole life. I was drafted, played the majority of my career with Chicago. That's where my home is now. Um, you know, I'm a Blackhawk through and through. So to finally see that happen, we had some really good teams in the 80s and the, and the 90s, um, but we just didn't get over that hump. So to be a part of it, to see the whole progression that was going along and, and uh, being able to be a part of it on the other side of it, but still kind of feeling those emotions as a broadcaster, as I felt as a player. I mean, I had butterflies going into those broadcasts and it was because I was, you know, I felt that those were, those were player butterflies, but I didn't know how to separate them um, because I was cheering for the Blackhawks. I was doing my job. Um, but as John said, you know, he, he, he kind of started preparing for this and I'm sure that he prepared for it a lot longer than that, knowing John uh, and the professional uh, person that he is in, in that um, in that matter I kind of woke up with butterflies thinking well gee they have a chance to win the Stanley Cup and you know let's go let's get this 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 whole thing going I wasn't trying to figure out you know how this was going to pan out whatever I was just hoping that they were going to win the series and, and you know wrap it up there in Philadelphia well you guys have had the, the good fortune to call a, a handful of uh, pretty amazing playoff games throughout this Blackhawks uh, run through this uh, last decade so uh, it's always great to listen to you guys and great to talk to you right now. Thanks for uh, joining us. Thank you for having us, Ian. By the way, uh, I'm, I'm going to speak for myself, and I'll speak for Troy, too, if he wouldn't mind. I hope we get to call a couple of more because they're an awful lot of fun. Yeah, they, they sure are. And, and you know, in, in 13 and 15, um, you know, you, as exciting as they were, the, the 17 seconds in the in the Boston series and then Tampa when you know Patrick Kane ended up scoring late in the third period to kind of give them that that cushion um those were kind of definitive endings to those games that in Boston you didn't have a whole lot of time to figure out what's going on only about a minute um but the experience as a broadcaster I, I think is second to none to be a part of that to win three Stanley Cups as a broadcaster uh, to be a part of the Blackhawks is something very special. And, and I certainly have enjoyed the, the opportunity to work with John on these calls because he's the best in the business. Thank you. Likewise, Thank you, fellas. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having us on. Thanks, Eric. Eric.